Ukraine has the ability to completely destroy the Russian Federation's Black Sea Fleet, which it has deployed near Novorossiysk. This opinion was expressed on Channel 24 by military expert, pilot instructor and retired Ukrainian Armed Forces Colonel Roman Svitan. He recalled that according to the Russians themselves, on the night of November the 15th, drones attacked Krimsk in Russia, not far from the Kirsch Bridge. At the same time, the drones could probably hit the Russian airbase. It is currently known that 50 UAVs were used, while the Ukrainian side has not officially reported an attack. According to Svitan, the airbase in Krimsk was home to Russian tactical aviation, which they used to attack southern Ukraine. At the same time, Krimsk is located near Novorossiysk, where the Russian Federation transferred the vast majority of the surviving Black Sea Fleet, and therefore the local aviation also covers Novorossiysk Bay and the terminal. The destruction of this air defense sector is also an opportunity to finally approach the destruction of the Novorossiysk port and terminal. The expert said, Recall Russia's Krasnodar region came under a massive drone attack recently. One of the targeted districts hosts a military airfield. Governor Venyamin Kondratiev said that two municipalities in the region were targeted, with Russian air defense intercepting approximately 36 drones over the Krimsk and Krasnoarmysk districts. In Krimsk, debris from a drone fell on four residential properties, damaging the roof of one house and a car, according to Kondratiev. In the Krasnoamysk district, drone debris allegedly caused damage to the roof of a private house. No casualties were reported. The Russian telegram channel Astra cited local sources suggesting the drones may have been targeting the Krimsk military airbase. Astra noted that earlier reports from local officials claimed 46 drones had been intercepted over the Krimsk area. Astra said that his statement was later removed without explanation. The Russian Defense Ministry later said that its forces had intercepted 51 Ukrainian drones overnight, including 36 over the Krasnodar region, 10 over the Azov Sea, 3 over Russian-occupied Crimea, and another 2 over the Belgorod region. Outmanned and outgunned on the battlefield, Ukraine has turned to homemade drones to try to exhaust Russian combat capabilities as much as possible from afar, targeting Russian military-industrial complex facilities, air bases, or oil refineries. While Ukraine regularly claims attacks deep into Russia, it is difficult to verify the authenticity of the reports and the scale of the damage inflicted. Recently, Russian President Vladimir Putin and the heads of Russia's three largest oil companies rejected a proposal to merge into one large structure. The talk is about the merger of two state-owned companies, Gazpromneft and Rosneft, with Lukoil. The Financial Times reports. The source writes that the head of the Russian Ministry of Energy, Sergei Tsivilev, the husband of Putin's cousin, is in favor of such a merger. At the same time, former heads of Russian oil companies stated that such a merger would give state companies access to Look Oil's trading division in the UAE. However, the Kremlin understands that all Russian oil companies would then fall under sanctions. The merger was first announced on November the 9th. However, the Kremlin and oil companies declined to comment. Conflicting reports about a proposed merger of a Russian oil company highlight potential factional fighting between Putin's cronies and the heads of Russian energy companies. Sivilev tried to use his family connections to promote the idea of merging the three companies. However, the oil company's management also used its leverage in the Kremlin. Rosneft CEO Sechin and Gazprom CEO Miller are longtime and close friends of Putin. The latter had to decline Sivilev's offer, although Putin himself was interested in such a merger. Then the Kremlin would be able to control the entire oil-producing industry of the Russian Federation without any problems. Experts do not rule out that such a merger was aimed exclusively against Sechin in order to weaken his role in the company. Others claim that it was he who insisted on the merger in order to later become the CEO of all three Russian oil companies. The press service of Rosneft denies Sechin's evil intentions. Earlier, media reported that Russian oligarchs are concerned about Trump coming to power in the United States. Russian oligarchs do not share the joy of some of their compatriots over Donald Trump's victory in the U.S. elections and do not believe that the elected American president will lift the sanctions imposed against Russia, just as they do not believe in a quick end to the war in Ukraine.
In this regard, they do not see prospects for optimism in the Russian economy, pointing to its significant change over the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, which makes long-term goals unattainable. Due to the departure of international companies from Russia, the Russian economy is experiencing a degradation of production capacity, especially in the technology and engineering sectors. The Kremlin's declared import substitution is proceeding slowly and sending Russians to war is exacerbating the labor shortage. The Russian film company Mosfilm has donated 50 pieces of military equipment stored in warehouses to the needs of the Russian occupation forces. The statement was made by Mosfilm CEO Karen Shaknazarov during a meeting with Vladimir Putin in the Kremlin. He detailed that in 2023, the film company handed over 28 T-55 tanks, 8 PT-76 amphibious light tanks, 6 armoured personnel carriers and 8 tractors to the Russian armed forces. The equipment was used as a prop for filming movies and TV shows and also used as entertainment for tourists. It was stored at the Moss Film facility in the town of Krasnoznamensk near Moscow. It is worth noting that as of today, PT-76 amphibious light tanks have not been spotted in the combat zone, but given the growing shortage of armoured vehicles in the Russian armed forces and the decommissioning of other outdated armoured vehicles, such as the BTR-50, this is quite possible, according to Militani. The Russian army is actively using Soviet T-55 stroke T-54 medium tanks in combat operations against the armed forces of Ukraine as artillery, fire support vehicles and infantry support. It should be reminded that the return of T-54 and T-55 tanks to service for the Russian army was announced in March 2023. At that time, the conflict intelligence team published photos of a train with these tanks heading from the far eastern part of Russia. According to SIT, this echelon departed from the city of Arsenyev, which houses the 1,295th Central Tank Reserve and Storage Base. According to the Oryx Osint service, the Russians lost at least 13 T-55 stroke T-54 tanks of various modifications during the fighting. The Soviet T-54 and T-55 tanks are commonly referred to under two indexes as two different models, but in fact, they are part of the same line of combat vehicles. These tanks were constantly modernized and had design changes while conceptually remaining the same tank. The T-54 stroke T-55 can be distinguished from the later T-62 by a characteristic gap between the front first and second support rollers. Other distinctive features include the muzzle compensator at the end of the D-10T gun barrel and the specific convex radiator cap on the turret roof. Currently, there are three armored vehicle repair plants in Russia, but only one of them specializes in repairing vehicles such as the T-55 and the T-62. This is the 103rd armored repair plant, so the vehicles will be delivered there. The key drawbacks of the T-54 and T-55 are the critically low level of protection, lack of range finders and ballistic computers, primitive sights, and an inadequate gun stabilization system. Last year, Mosfilm Studio gave the Russian army 28 T-55 and 8 PT-76 tanks, as well as other military equipment. Mosfilm CEO Karen Shanazarov said this during a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. According to him, the equipment was stored in the military technical base of the film studio.